that's what I get for not wanting more snow. Here's my top 10 favorite things about this monster. Number one, the build quality. The fit and finish of this machine is the best I've ever seen from any brand. And I've seen most of them. So really, really impressive. It's thick walled construction steel. It fits together so nicely, a lot of detail. It's clean, it's nice. So that's number one. Number two, linear motors. You might not need them. Honestly, I don't either, but they do give, I mean, they don't wear, they're fast, they're super accurate with the Renishaw digital scales, five micron per meter precision. I mean, come on. They leave an excellent surface finish on the edge. And even though I'm running a single flute Chinese one pass, I don't do a finish pass typically. But if I, let's say I step down to thick aluminum and I go six millimeters each pass or something, you can't tell where those step down lines are. They don't exist. And that's thanks to these awesome, awesome high precision linear motors. Number three, the probe. You should always have a probe on any machine. It gives you so many possibilities to copy things, orient them on the machine, measure stuff, check tolerances, anything. Number four, the suction cup. Not perfect for every occasion, but the few amount of chips it leaves is so little I can just keep blowing them on the floor and it's so little that the, the vacuum can handle that no problem. Number five must be being able and that I dare to leave this thing running while I'm not here. I feel so very confident now that I have no problem re leaving this running overnight. Of course, I would be, I would be checking in occasionally, <laughs> just make sure. But still, that is of a huge value to me. Number six, the T-Track. I think it's 250 millimeters about and 6.1 meters long. There's so much vers versatility in a thing like this. I mean, look at this. 3D print fixtures and anything. Imagine how many vices I could get there. Next up is the probing features of PC cam. And let's, you can go into measurement of coordinates. You can measure a reference edge or whatever you want and if you measure left and right it's gonna tell you the, the dimension in between those two points down here you have measure thickness that's just setting you z0 you have your basing use that all, of, all the time you got inside diameter outside diameter a reference edge with four points or two you decide and it's gonna tell you the zero point location and also the rotation of the piece. This is just the bottom right instead of the bottom left. Top left, top right. And this is for the angle. And this is for measuring a cuboid. It's gonna tell you information like the coordinates and the dimensions of the thing you're measuring. And this is ridiculously accurate. Scanning on edge for copying stuff. Have used it a few times, really golden when you need to. Surface scan, well, you'll see in this probably, but you can measure the entire surface if you want to, and it's gonna give you a grid and show you the variations in height. And you can compensate your toolpath, adjust your toolpath to, to consider the deviations when you're cutting. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Scanning along contour did use these recently really great next up is the ability to also apply pre-made templates to your vectors we go into stages generator here are all your layers predefined layers so if pc cam finds any of these layers in your vectors that you import your dxf then it's going to apply whatever pre-made templates you want 
In this case, this is an M6-3. That means an M6 hole in three millimeter thick aluminum in this case. So what it's gonna do first, apply this pad, uh, template, which just makes the hole and it goes extra deep so that when we thread the hole, we can start a bit lower. Next up is the actual threading. It's gonna choose the appropriate thread mill and the, all the parameters, everything's done. So perfect threads every time. And then it's gonna go and chamfer the top of the hole just to break the edge and remove whatever chip might still be there. Generate for current drawing. Bam, it's gonna tell you eight stages generated. Here they are, control F5 to refresh them. This is so nice. As you can see, it's gonna do all the tiny holes first. And then it's gonna do the inner loop. These are not standard holes because the area is too big. So they, it's gonna make, cut them next. Uh, it's gonna chamfer that. And it's gonna chamfer it again right on the bottom. And then we cut everything out and then chamfering on top and bottom. And it, it's gonna end up uh, cutting off the sheet here so that we can just remove that scrap. Everything auto generated instantly. Next up, is the, the, this nice feature where you go into stage parameters you have this two length control so nice you just check this you set in your parameter as in if the tool length varies more than this value then it's gonna notify you you can inspect before machining or after processing uh, if you want to overwrite the tool length with whatever value it measures, sure, why not? Vacuum control, just super easy and activate that. And yeah, when you go into your tool storage there, you have forced tool measurement in storage. The machine's gonna fetch each and every tool and measure the length of them. Yeah, and by the way, if you click that, then this is gonna show up. So you just select which tools you wanted to check. By the way, the Bush vacuum salesman was here and uh, he asked me why I didn't have silencers on the pumps and I just didn't know they existed. So he, he made me a deal. He said, if I buy two of them, then he's gonna make sure they paint it in the exact same color as the pump itself. And they did. And they do make a difference, so happy with that even though they were expensive next up tool storage i get 12 plus 12 tools i love that it's pretty much just enough right now they it's all full though would i buy it again i would which i just might i would get another 12 tool carousel there actually because you can never have enough tools and last but not least i have to mention the guys of the kimla of course well, this is what a bunch of aluminum flowers look like all right, so today I've made this box. It's an electrical junction box thing. And I needed to produce it, have it painted, and then we're gonna engrave some tiny letters underneath these holes. And to be able to do that, because this is not flat, and the engraving is very sensitive. So we need to measure and compensate for the deviation. And it's quite tricky actually. Well, it was before I kind of figured it out. So what you're supposed to be able to do is select your geometry so that you don't have to probe this whole thing. There's holes and stuff anyway, so that could be a hassle. So I guess what you could do is just select the entities that you're going to engrave and just probe those. What I did was I draw this, drew this line so that it's gonna probe along the surfaces where I'm gonna be engraving. And uh, the first probing I did, I did not have the divide contours selected, so it only probed the first point there, and then every time it changes direction. I then checked this divide contours and did a divide distance by 15 millimeters so that every 15 millimeters, it's gonna check the, the height. So let me show you. I'm gonna press start scan. And I'm gonna climb up on the table and have a close look. Oh.
This is so luxurious though. Whew, I used to struggle getting things to be concentric and perpendicular and all of that good stuff. While now it's just, it's so damn easy. Okay, next step. Okay, so let me explain. So you just saw me probe this already. However, the way I did it a second ago was by scanning a long contour. And that works great if you're going to engrave stuff. However, engraving really just traces along the, the vectors of the letters, which is makes it so that the uh, the letters are not sharp in the corners here because it's just gonna go there and turn around and go back so it's gonna be rounded all the edges and the letters are going to be too big too because it's center on the contour not inside the contour so what I do is I run a cutting corners thing instead that means it's gonna be following this white line. It's on the inside of the vector. And when it comes to a sharp corner like this, it's gonna go up in Z so that the corner stays really sharp. And when I do that, there's no option here when I go into advanced. I can't take the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the probing into account, only on engraving. So what I did was I inserted these markers in every number and letter. And then I used a surface scan instead and probed all six markers. That gives me this grid here. You see it's yellow there. So that's gonna be higher. There's a red section. It's gonna be lower there. So it's a little bit tilted, but that shouldn't matter because this should really work. And it's quite scary though, because I've produced this electrical box and I've had it painted and everything. And you have to screw up these letters, then I'm gonna have to redo everything. So wish me luck. Okay, so that's what I did. I just started. <laughs> want to be ready in case I've done something wrong and it comes towards me instead of backwards and I did set it up so I was 0.1 millimeter higher up than I'm supposed to because I really want to verify and if you look that looks absolutely spectacular that is the exact same depth as you see there I'd only gone through the top coat. This is the uh, the base coat you see there. So, uh, oh, that is wonderful news because that means this should actually work. Okay, so here's the end result. Looks really good actually. So yeah, that's the thing about probing in PC cam. Not every operation is able to take in your probing into account. So just keep that in mind. Um, so these are linear motors all done and ready to go with super serious connectors and some of these linear packages are huge. Have a look at that. One. Here's a linear motor ready to go. So on that transport block, uh, straight to the machine. Nice. Ready for installation. All right. I 
it shows up on video as good as it does in real life. Jesus. So this is the Kimbler milling machine. This is a BFN 1007. I think it's a one meter travel machine in the X. Why? I have no idea. It says seven, so maybe it's 700 millimeters. I don't know. It's 24 tools, not sure. This can be had with up to 25 kilo, kilowatts spindle. Yes, you're gonna typically be running steel. Uh, all the chips do go down there, and you pull this out to empty it. At some point, there will be a conveyor available. Not right now, though. It seems to be doing a tool check detection. 